Hey, it's Ethan. And in this video, we're gonna be diving into the five top use cases of OpenAI's operator agent. So if you haven't heard, OpenAI released this um, agentic model where essentially you can type something in like, uh, you know, let's just use one of their samples here. It will go and it will, you know, search the web for you and actually click buttons. So this is a huge difference from just being able to use like search GPT or perplexity or something like that. Now it's being able to actually complete slightly more complex tasks. And in this video, I'm going to be going over the top five use cases of that. So, um, and these are not the average use cases. You can find the average use cases like, you know, uh, booking dinner, shopping for you, doing like grocery shopping, um, booking flights, finding news. Um, but in this video, we're actually going to be exploring some alternative use cases. So the first thing that I want to dive into is just general, um, just job search and application. So what you could do is you could say like, uh, I wonder if we have anything in here. All right. So, um, go to indeed.com and, uh, find me all of the top jobs in the, you know, uh, social media manager positions in the USA that are remote and where the salary is over 80k per year so one of the really interesting use cases you could have it go do job research for you and you could basically give it all the specific parameters of um, what you're looking for in terms of <clears throat> And so sometimes it fails, right? This is this thing's not perfect. Sometimes it, you know, it won't block this verify that you're a human. So I guess I could actually just take control. Um, all right, you have control, verify you're a human. And so there we go. You have control, finish up. Now finish up, return control to operator. And so this use case is really interesting. So rather than just clicking and like applying to every single job on Indeed for a specific skill set that you might have, what you could actually do is you could give it like a a file of here is my you know resume, here's where I've worked, here's my skills. Go and actually find all of the jobs that fit this criteria. Go apply to them, um, and you know use these criteria, right? $80,000 per year in the US social media manager. So now it's going to Indeed. We can kind of see it working here. Um, and we can actually see it thinking. So clicking browse for job, navigating jobs, selecting S category, scrolling to find job title, using search function. So it's searching for the you know social media manager role. It's, um, this one is <laughs> ironically an AI trainer. Um, and so, maybe this job will be outsourced by AI soon. But the idea here is that rather than having to do all this like super manual work on the job hunt, you could just have it, you know, understand what your skill set is and then apply to every single job that fits your skill set, um, you know, with customized uh, cover letters. I can't imagine anyone that's actually, um, that's actually hiring for a job. Like you got to imagine that every single cover letter is going to be AI written by AI already. But the idea here is that you can put yourself in front of the right people. You could use this to, you know, find the hiring manager and have, you know, operator reach out to them with a customized email with your resume or something like that. So that's one of the use cases. Um, the next use case here that I want to go into is actual uh, real estate market analysis and property hunting. So let's say we create a new one here. And I say, find, find me a list of properties in Virginia uh, or in Seattle that are under 500, 750K that are in safe areas and close to and that have scenic views. So I can give it these really specific search criteria and I can essentially ask operator to go and do all these things on my behalf. And so if you're, you know, a real estate agent and you're looking for, you know, people who want to buy your properties, or if you're looking to buy a property, you could go in here and you could essentially have it. We can see here, it's going, it's typing that in. Um, obviously it's an open ad product. So they're using Bing and not Google or something like that. Um, so we'll see how good it is. But for some reason it's going to videos. I said, find me a list of properties. Um, and so it's not a hundred percent, but okay. It went to Trulio, a Zillow board. It found it. It 
added in all of the parameters already. Um, zero to 750K house. Um, it's looking at agent listings. It's probably going to add in, you know, has a scenic view in some sort of like custom keyword area. And let's actually look at what is, yeah, so it's going to the keyword, applying scenic view filter, viewing homes, exploring map and listings for safety. And so you can see how complex of a task it's able to do already. It's finding, you know, it's it's extremely complex. I mean, not extremely complex, but it's able to like put in specific filters inside of Zillow and actually like navigate to that website. And now it's looking at, why is it going to quantum fiber? What? Selecting property listings in Trulia. And so it's literally like finding me houses and it found me the 689,000 three bed, three bath in a safe area with a nice view. Like that's pretty wild. Um, and so that's one potential use case of this. Um, it's pretty much, you know, anything that you're doing on the internet that is monotonous, you can have it do it for you. So the next use case that I want to look at here is um, travel planning. And so travel planning, actually, I'm going to let this run for a second because this is actually exciting. Scrolling for neighborhood safety insights. No way. It's literally going in and ranking the safety insights by a percentage. It's exploring the listings. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So it looks like we actually have two. All right, so that's wild. So you can actually have multiple multiple of these running at the same time. So before I get on to the next example, one of the things that's really interesting is I could run this in, you know, this is just running in the background. You can see it's navigating back to property listings. It's still going. Um, and so I can go back to this original one um, and it found me this. And so sometimes it'll ask you questions, like it'll get stuck and it'll say like, do you want me to do this or this? And so you... You still have to handhold it a little bit, but imagine if I just had 10 of these running at the same time and I'm just like being able to watch, oh, it's asking me to do this or I'm going here and it's, you know, finding all of these things. And so at the end of the day, this is a extremely powerful tool um, and sometimes it gets stuck. It's not perfect. This is their beta release. It's only to people in the US. It costs 200 bucks to, uh, to subscribe. You have to subscribe to their pro plan. And so I fronted the 200 to test it out. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend, you know, this is going to become open to the public or the $20 a month plan pretty soon. Um, and so let's go on to the next one where we could say, we could do travel research where it's saying like, find me the most affordable flights to a drop to a uh, beach front destination in the month of February. And yeah, let's just give it something broad like that. And we could just have it go and, you know, start doing research. Do you have any specific, no specific preferences for the location? It's going to go and it's going to do some research for me. Um, and then maybe I go on to the next use case and I say like, um, the next use case would be like, um, for our fourth use case, we could just say like event planning. So we could say like, find me the best event locations that could host 50 people and where they would be able to serve food and drinks within a 10 mile radius of downtown San Francisco. So maybe we ask operator to like help us plan out an event and we can see there's three different um, agents running right now. Um, and I'll run the last agent. So the last use case is um, just general customer research. So do customer research for me on the types of people that are into AI agents and the specific use cases and dream outcomes they have. So now I'm gonna run this. And the last use case is just doing general user research. So now if we look here, we can see, okay, we have a new message. All these are running at the same time. It says to continue, I need a departure. Um, departure, departure is uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. So 
So boom, it's going. Now what did this agent say? Seattle. I found several Seattle property listings. Oh, where's the message? Boom, it found us these three. Yes, give me details on all of these listings. So it's able to find listings with specific criteria for me. Um, and then this one is searching for flights and it's seeking affordability. It's looking for LA, other beachfront, comparing flights. And now this agent is, you know, let's look at the event locations one. So it's finding these event, Palm Event Center, Julia Morgan Ballroom. And so you can imagine that, why would you ever need to interact with, you know, Google again, if you could just ask this to accomplish whatever your goal is and have it go and search Google for you and then prevent you, uh, present you with the summarized, like here are, you know, the three best locations within a 10 mile radius of downtown San Francisco. Um, now uh, sort based on price. So now it's gonna go do that. And the customer research one. Let's see, this is for like a more business use case. Let's see what happens here. Our tech leaders, developers, automotive, cybersecurity, customer service, e-com, logistics. User use cases range from automotion, uh, automation and decision making. All right, so uh, create a more comprehensive more comprehensive one pager that dives into these ICPs and uncovers the specific problems and solute problems that these personas are trying to solve. So this would be a more business use case um, for this one, it's trying to find the most affordable. So we can go in here and see it like 100 bucks a night, 200 bucks a night. It has all these tabs open up in the top. So, boom. It's just crazy. Like, it's literally doing like no human could do this much research at one time. And now this is a little chaotic. You know, I'm trying to show you all the use cases here. So you're seeing like five different examples going at once. I don't recommend using this by just doing a, as many different things as once and trying to multitask. But if you had a specific goal that you were trying to reach, you could just, you know, have multiple agents trying to reach that goal for you. It says 412 for a round trip to L.A., I don't want to go to LA. That's the last place I want to go. Um, what about the East Coast or the PNW? <laughs> so now I'll let that go again. Let's find this one. And so, yeah, this obviously still needs some work. Um, Operator is not uh, to the level of you know being able to have a hundred of these running for your business. But OpenAI mentioned that they're going to both release this to the public. Currently, it's only available in the US. They're gonna release it worldwide, then they're gonna make it cheaper. Um, and then you'll be able to essentially, uh, what I'm most interested in is they're going to release an API. So I could build out systems like inside of N8N um, and all these different platforms that I'm currently building systems out of. I could basically have an agent, like a multi-agent team is going to be much more feasible because I can go create an agent and have it, you know, call this operator agent, which is going to be extremely robust. So maybe I have like an operator agent that is focused on marketing sales. And I build out an entire team of operator agents that I'm calling via API using something like N8N. Um, and so this is just the tip of the iceberg. I hope you found this video, um, informative, exciting, inspiring. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you're interested, I run something called AI Agency University, where we actually talk about, we build these live on Zoom calls every single week. Um, and I have a, a program where you can build AI agents in a weekend and kind of learn all of the prompt engineering skills that you need to set this up properly. And then I have some templates in here that you can just install onto your computer right away. So you can get up and running with, you know, very custom agents using something like N8N um, within, you know, a couple hours max. Um, because this is, you know, this is browser-based agents, but I, I don't think that the other types of agents are going away. This NADN 
uh, relevance AI type agents where you can really build it custom and do a lot of prompt engineering and like turn it into a system. I think those are still going to be extremely valuable. And this is this, you know, operator agents are going to be are going to augment those systems. And a lot of people will be able to get value, you know, from just operating these agents. This is a uh, pretty solid personas <laughs> to, you know, just chat with the operator agent and have it do stuff for you. Um, but the people that are going to, you know, 100x their work capacity are the ones that are going to be able to take this operator agent and to actually build it into systems, into, you know, construct larger systems where these agents are talking back and forth with each other and are solving more and more complex problems. Um, so thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it valuable and I hope you have a beautiful.